So in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about titration. And titration is a very specific process that we use in chemistry to study uh, and analyze unknown solutions in some way. Uh, in your class in first year chemistry, titrations are going to be limited basically to studying acids and bases and using acids to study bases or the other way around. Uh, titration, as you can see here, and I would ask you to put these definitions and kind of quick comments down into your notes someplace uh, so that you've got them. But titration is basically using a solution with a known concentration, something that we know about uh, and are very certain of, to determine the concentration of an unknown solution that we're trying to find out more about. So we use a known that we often sometimes will call it a standard. Here you'll see the word titrant, but this is also known as, you can say, aka the standard in our lab. We'll say it's been standardized because we know exactly what its concentration is. So it's the standard that we're going to base our work upon. And then the unknown solutions we're trying to find out more about, we call it the analyte. Now this is what's being analyzed. So we use a standard to study an analyte or determine the concentration of an analyte. And titrations, as you can see here, are done very precisely. So we're going to use instruments. We're going to use glassware that has lots of very precise little markings on it. And your measurements on your titration work need to be very perfect. Uh, when you go to make your measurements, you don't want to be rough, approximate numbers. You want to be very, very precise. And you'll see as we get into lab and start working with burettes uh, that their, their markings are very, very precise. So take a minute. If you need to pause me and write these things down, do that. Please put these down in your notes so you have them. Feel free to pause me if you need to do that now. Okay. Now, let's look at the setup for a general titration. And you're going to see this in lab. Uh, and you're going to see this described as part of the problems that I'll solve with you in these videos. Uh, but I wanted to show you the setup, basically. So this is not two different setups. This is kind of the before and the after. So just let me, let's make that clear. On the left, you see the setup in the lab before you start. And on the right, you see the setup after you've finished uh, your, your titration. And so on the left, you see a burette. This long, skinny tube here is called a burette. And at the bottom, you see a little valve that we can open with this kind of skinny needle tip coming out of it. A burette is designed very precisely to add just a drop at a time. If you're controlling this valve here correctly, you can add a drop at a time and very slowly add the perfect, perfect amount of the titrant or the standardized solution that's in here. So you can kind of see in this solution or in this burette rather is a solution and that's our, our known, our known or our titrant that's been standardized and is in this, in this uh, tube. That might be an acid or it might be a base. And then down here in the flask below, you'll see is what we're analyzing or what we're studying, and it's called the analyte. This is our unknown solution. We don't know its concentration. Okay, we don't know its molarity. So there's a known concentration up here in the in the burette, and there's an unknown concentration down here. Now we do need to know exactly how much we put in there. We can't have two unknowns at a time. In other words, if we know the volume, and it says here known volume, then it's the concentration that's unknown, and that's the key. That's what we'll be looking to solve and find when we do a titration, either calculation on paper or an actual lab, um, when we get in the lab and do this. Okay? So we know all we need to know about the, the known concentration and the known volume up here in our burette. That's going to be our standard, and down below what we're trying to study and learn more about. On the right, you see after the reaction has happened or after the uh, the titration has occurred that the volume, the amount in this burette has now decreased. So we've drained through the valve some amount of this solution. You can see it's come down from way up here at the beginning to now way down here at the end. The key volume readings are these that they let a bold face for you here. We need to take the initial reading and the final reading and figure out the difference between those two by subtraction in order to know exactly how much of the known titrant was added to the flask in order to get where we wanted to be. So subtracting those two is part of the math on some of the problems to tell us how much of the known titrant was used. Now, down below here in the flask, you'll notice it's changed color. Uh, the solution started out as rather clear in this first flask, and afterwards now you can see the volume is higher because the solution has been added to it, and you'll see there, there's a color change implied here. And when you do this in lab, this is kind of what you'll see. It starts out as clear, looking like a lot like water, and by the end it's slightly pink in this example. The uh, titration that we'll do first in lab is almost certainly going to look something like this. It'll look slightly pink at the end. 
Um, there are different colors that are available depending on which indicator we've used. An indicator is a compound that changes color at different uh, under different conditions. And when we're doing it in, in a first first year chemistry, we're going to be working with acids and bases. And so basically the idea being that if we start with an acid and we add a base to it, we're going to neutralize the acid. And if we start with a base, we'd add an acid to it and we'd neutralize the base. Either way, the pH is changing. You've heard of pH before. It's a way of measuring how acidic or basic a solution is. Uh, and when we add an acid to a base, its pH changes and vice versa. Uh, and when the pH changes, an indicator, which is a special compound that we choose for the particular thing we're studying, that indicator <clears throat> is a compound that's a big, complicated-looking molecule, usually, that changes its structure slightly when you add an acid or a base to it. And when it changes over at a certain pH point, that molecule changes over, and uh, the, the structure changes, and the color appears different because of how light bounces off those molecules, which is pretty cool and beyond what we're going to study in first-year chemistry. So, an indicator is a special compound used to show when a pH change at a particular pH has occurred, and that lets us know when the reaction is complete, when the titration is done. It says here you can see the word neutralized solution. That's the case when we neutralize an acid with a base or the other way around, and the indicator, if we're using one, has changed color. The other way to know when the reaction has happened, other than using a, an indicator like this, would be to uh, use a pH probe. So if we hooked up a pH probe uh, to like a lab quest or something similar, or even just right into your computer, uh, we could watch the pH with time, and we could keep track of how much solution's been added, and uh, we could watch for that pH to change quickly, because when we neutralize an acid with a base or the other way around, the pH changes rather quickly at a very particular moment along the way. And that moment is what we're looking for in our titration. You'll see it when we get into lab, uh, and you'll see it graphed out a little bit when we work on those in class as well. So for now, this is just the basic setup. Um, from beginning to end, the initial volume to the final volume are two volumes you need to make very precise measurements on. Usually, both of these and on a burette, any volumes you read off of a, of a burette should have two decimal places. If you're working in the lab and you're doing a titration, make sure that your volume measurements off, your, off of your burette have two decimal places. If you have only one or none, you are not doing the titration properly and your volumes won't be acceptable. you got to have two, which means you're going to have to estimate the bottom of that meniscus and do so very carefully. Okay. The other thing I'll mention real briefly here and then we'll go on is that uh, typically you'll find with a burette that the, the measurements on the sides of these, they're numbered in, in milliliters, usually from, from 0 to 50. They have a capacity of 50 milliliters, but they're numbered a little bit unusually. Okay? So you'll find out that oftentimes with our numbers on here, the, uh, the numbers will start at the top at 0 and end at the bottom at 50. Okay, so the largest numbers will actually be at the bottom, which seems a little backwards because we're used to things like graduated cylinders, right? The idea being here that this is more or less telling you how much you've dispensed. So if you were to start with the volume right at the top, like it, like it is in this first picture, that would mean that the, nothing has been dispensed or run, th run out through the valve, right? So your volume is at zero amount used. And if you, if you drain it down and the, the level goes way down to the bottom, we end up over here at the bottom, you could figure out then by looking at the curve how much has been used. So that line, that meniscus, would actually represent the volume that you've dispensed or used to neutralize the stuff that's down there in the flask. Right? So those two measurements you'll find are often somewhat upside down as far as looking at a burette, and the numbers seem to go backwards, but you'll get used to it. Okay? So that's the general idea for a titration. We'll get into titration calculations and problems, uh, but I want to introduce you to that, and it wouldn't hurt at all uh, along the way to maybe sketch this out and label a few things on there yourself and uh, have, have it down as kind of a guide with the key numbers being especially this initial volume that we'll take down and this final volume that we'll take down. And along the way in our calculations, <clears throat> you'll see those used out as well. Okay, So that's the basics. We'll come back with an example or two in the next videos.